So I wanted to do some more videos where I just talk about certain gas masks a bit more because people seem to enjoy those and unless you've watched all of my old videos you've probably not seen them before so I thought I'd go, you know, do a load more videos where I talk about masks I've already talked about just in a bit more detail and if you're new you'll find these interesting, you know, the camera's a bit better, the lighting's a bit better, everything like that. So today we're going to look at my S6 respirator, or SR6. So it comes up in this nice sort of Velcro um, waterproof bag. Um, this is the kind of bag that they'd later use for the S10 and sort of FM12 and everything like that, just, you know, made to a bit of a higher standard, but this is where that sort of bag started. And here is the mask itself. And the S6 is one of my personal favourite looking masks ever. It's not one of my favourite masks when you actually wear it and put it on, it starts to lose a few points there, but it's a really cool sort of intimidating looking mask. So, um... This was used by the British Army for from around somewhere in the 1960s up until the 80s when it was replaced by the S10. And like with lots of equipment, when it goes into service and when it's replaced, it doesn't all happen overnight. Quite often there are some people who are still issued with the old mask for a lot longer than the other ones. So reservists are normally the last people to get a new mask, and then reservists are normally the last people to move away from that mask. So, um, yeah. It uses 40mm filters, standard NATO filters. Let's get one of them out. Uh, this is an actual S6 filter made by... It's a D10 canister, apparently. Uh, Birmingham and Leyland, I think. Yeah, Leyland and Birmingham. Particulate and vapour, so that's a CBRN filter, or NBC as we know it today. Um, and there's the filter intake there. Interesting filter intake. It's got the external bit, but it's also got kind of a filter stabiliser that goes in the middle. So, the idea being, you know, it makes a better seal around the filter, which is quite cool. So let's screw that in now so you can see it. And there we go. So, it's a, quite an interesting mask. Uh, the mask's most famous uh, with the Iranian embassy siege in London during the 80s, when the SAS wore it when they stormed the building. That's where most people remember it from. A lot of people say it's an SAS mask, but the entire British Army used it. As far as I'm aware, there were uh, left-handed shooter variants with the filter mounted on the right side. But obviously, that would be one you'd have to find. So I've got some stamps on it, which you can see there. And they say 1987. So this is actually a very... What's that? 67? No, that looks like an 8... Yeah, that's an 8 because it says 8 on both places. So this is a very late built S6 because by this point they are actually replacing them with the S10. So that's quite a late issued one. But 1987, LBR, so that's Leyland Birmingham Rubber. Um, it's got more than one stamp on it, another one at the bottom there. Um, but basically, and some more around the filter intake. But basically this mask was one, you know, this was made, as I said, for 20 odd years. Um, and some countries still use it, or clones or copies of it. I think Turkey has a white variant of it for some reason, but... Yeah, it's a good mask. And it was way ahead of its time, um, simply because it has a lot of weird features on it, or features, you know, that are quite cool. So, you don't really have a voice diaphragm as, much, of diaphragm as such. You've got your exhale valve here. Um, but you can hear people speaking in it a bit better than some masks, so... It's probably got some sort of pseudo diaphragm. Six point head harness that's very comfortable, uh, does its job. This mask has a very interesting feature I've talked about before. Around the outside, there's this sort of um, rubber cushion. And in the mask here is like a tap. And you open that tap up and blow onto it. This sounds a bit weird, but bear with me. And you can inflate the rubber around the outside of the mask. So let me get the straps back on it so I can sort of try and do this. And then we're going to open this tap up, and it's like inflating a little um, thing, so. It's actually going to be quite difficult to do, but. I think I've probably got it fully inflated as is, but. That inflates that skirt sort of bit around the outside there. So, you can adjust the airtight seal on the inside by blowing into a thing on the inside of the mask, which is a really weird concept. It basically fills up this blood. I'm just going to try a bit more because it doesn't quite feel fully inflated. I'll try and open it as best I can.
Right, off camera I've managed to actually inflate that so that's now fully blown up and cushioned so that makes a better face seal and makes the mask more comfortable. So anyway, let's put it on. I'm just going to pull it on this way because my hair is short enough that it will make a seal this way. And there we go. Should be airtight. Yeah, that's airtight. And it's got a very comfortable outside seal as mentioned before. But there's one thing I really don't like about this mask, which kind of kills it for me. Um, don't get me wrong, I still love the mask and everything, but the main thing I don't like with this is the eyepieces. Now you can tell they're curved. Where the light reflects on them, you should be able to see where the curve is. Now, the issue with this mask is that how they've curved the lenses means you kind of feel nauseous wearing it. And the reason is you get a very good field of view, don't get me wrong, you know, a great field of view on this, but... Because of the curve in the plastic, it ends up kind of looking like a Hall of Mirrors effect. That's the only way I can describe it. It's kind of a fisheye thing. So if I turn my head like that, wow, that's weird. Um, like your eyes don't focus on things properly because of how the glass curves. But, you know, other than that, it is a nice mask. Um, so the visibility is good. It's just not comfortable to wear it where it just it's so weird. Um... Another thing I don't like is the air intake on this, the sort of Tissot tube, you might have to see there, that's where the air intake is. Um, so when it blows in, it blows cold air onto your eyes a bit. Um, the air intake doesn't really go around to that lens. This thing doesn't steam up because it's got a very good oral nasal cup in it. But the issue is it kind of always blows cold air into my eye that makes me want to blink on that side. So that's one of the things I don't like so much about the design. But remember, we're talking about the 1960s when this came into service, when the Americans had the M17, a cheek filter mask. And here you have a side-loaded 40mm mask that most modern military masks kind of bear a resemblance to this. Obviously the S10 is kind of like a super improved version of this. The S8 mask, which is like the prototype S10, actually ends up looking more like an S6 than um, an S10, so... There's that, but yeah, this is a really cool mask, I love it to bits, as said, it's only really because of the weird eye bits and the air intake, the reason I wouldn't really want to use this, but for when this was made, yeah, it's a great mask, it's comfortable, visibility's good even though you have that weird visual effect, and yeah, it's a testament to how good a mask it was that it stayed in service for so long, so there you go, that's the S6 respirator, and it's really a damn good mask.